The ulnar nerve begins as a continuation of the medial cord of the brachial plexus. Its initial path down the medial side of the humerus lies lateral to the brachial artery. Note that the arm can be divided into the anterior and posterior compartment, which is separated by the medial intermuscular septum. The anterior compartment contains the flexor muscles, such as the brachialis and the biceps brachii. And in the posterior compartment, there are the tricep muscles. As the ulnar nerve reaches around 10 cm proximal to the medial epicondyle, it perforates through this medial intermuscular septum through a fibrous area called the arcade of struthers into the posterior compartment. The nerve then passes through a groove between the medial epicondyle and the olecranon, where it enters the cubital tunnel with the superior collateral ulnar vessels. The lateral walls of the cubital tunnel are formed by the ulnar and humeral heads of the flexor carpi ulnaris. The roof of the tunnel is formed by the aponeurosis that joins the two heads, as well as a thickened fibrous band called the Osborne's ligament, and the floor of the tunnel is formed by the medial collateral ligament. After the ulnar nerve exits the cubital tunnel, it enters the anterior compartment of the forearm. In the forearm, the ulnar nerve is bounded laterally by the flexor carpi ulnaris and lies anterior to the flexor digitorum profundus. These two muscles are the only muscles in the forearm that are innervated by the ulnar nerve, which has branches supplying them as it travels down the forearm. Note that the ulnar nerve only supplies the medial half of the flexor digitorum profundus, as the lateral half is supplied by the median nerve. The ulnar nerve also gets closer to the ulnar artery as it moves distally. The palmar cutaneous branch branches off from the main nerve proximal to the wrist, where it penetrates the muscle and the deep fascia to provide sensory innervation to the palm. Specifically, it innervates the ulnar side of the palm. Then, as the main ulnar nerve arrives at the wrist joint, a dorsal branch branches off, penetrating deep to the flexor carpi ulnaris and the deep fascia to the dorsal side of the hand, where it provides sensory innervation to the ulnar side of the dorsum, as well as the skin overlying the fifth digit and the medial half of the fourth digit. Back in the main ulnar nerve, it continues to travel over the palmar side of the hand with the ulnar artery over the flexor rectinaculum. Here, both the artery and the nerve travel through a structure called the Guillon's Canal. This canal is formed by many structures, such as the flexor retinaculum as its floor, the medial wall formed by the pisiform bone, the lateral wall formed by the hook of the hamate, and the roof formed by the palmar carpal ligament, which is not shown here. As the nerve passes through the Guillon's Canal, it is divided into superficial and deep branches. The superficial branches provide innervation to the fifth digit and the medial half of the fourth digit whereas the deep branch innervates muscles such as the adductor pollicis, the flexor pollicis brevis, the three thenar muscles including the abductor digiti minimi, the flexor digiti minimi, and the opponens digiti minimi. Finally, it also innervates the interossei muscles and the third and fourth lumbricals.